again, this is Robert Veach here. This is my video review of the Zotec brand, their model ZT-702S. It's a 2-in-1 oscilloscope multimeter with 2.8 inch IPS screen display right there. 9999 counts multimeter, single channel, 10 megahertz bandwidth of, of uh, 48 um, megabits per second sampling and high real-time sampling rate and plus or minus 400 volt input voltage it displays ohms voltage and waveforms so what you're seeing right here is the one kilohertz wave that is auto generated on the side of the unit there's, uh, there's the probe that it comes with the probe has the ability to do 1x or 10x there is a switch on the back you go to go to a 10x and it reduces it down to one tenth of the value it has capacitance adjustments on the probe if you don't see a perfect square wave which we do so that display is so cool it's ips display so you see it at any different angle the studio lights are really bright but it's a really nice display yellow you have all the functions on there which we're going to go over so impressive and it comes with the two probes for the multimeter itself and this is totally rechargeable with an internal lithium ion battery it comes with the cable and a nice thermal probe so that you can measure temperature probe temperatures and a nice holder which is really great and the manual it comes with is really well written it's going to tell you how to use all the functions of this multimeter oscilloscope so let's go over the, the different functions of the, uh, the oscilloscope that's on here so you can see up in the upper left here it says run that's the status display so it's telling you that the waveform is automatically acquisitions acquisitioned right now then you see that little rectangular bar right there with the red in the center red each side that displays the current time-based position within the memory depth because remember this is over sampling and to allow you to get that wide bandwidth of 10 megahertz and then the third thing on there is the time base scale displays the current horizontal time base and that's that right there we see it's 500 microseconds and that is the display of the one kilohertz that we're looking at which is coming off the unit itself and number four on here is the set uh, vertical voltage scale value and right now it's set to two volts and uh, that's where it's at right now and then you can see a battery status over there on the upper right then we've got uh, the trigger level which is uh, number five and that's right there and you can see that it is showing uh, zero millivolts so it's going to trigger anything above zero and you could change and, and you can actually alter that and uh, number seven is the horizontal cursor and that's that line you see right there that little line in the vertical with the little orange that's the cursor letting you know the position that the timeline actually is in and then number eight on here is the waveform itself that you're seeing and uh, number nine on the display is the actual frequency that it is measuring and if you look right there it is one kilohertz and number 10 on the display is a little tiny line which is the vertical cursor it displays the current triggered vertical voltage position and there's a little arrow right there and that's where that line is going through the center of the wave if you have it on DC it'll be slightly different right now I believe it's on AC and number 12 on the display there's a lot of information on here is the VMAX which is the maximum vo uh, voltage value of the collected signal and that's number 12 so you can see VMAX right there is 1.75 volts and that's what's being fed to the meter from the built-in signal generator and number 13 is the voltage time base and you can see that uh, you display voltage time base you've got move right there trigger and DC or AC you can see it's on AC right now so you can move these functions see how it has F1 F1 you can move then you go F2 see how you can go to move right there then we can actually move the waveform up and down F3 we have the trigger and you could change the trigger position that it's going to be triggering at then you have F4 whether it's AC or DC 
and if you could put AC, it's triggering it, or DC. Now see how the trigger went away because it's no longer the right value to trigger. So I put AC back on. So there's a lot of functionality in this display of everything you're seeing right here. Now if you go to mode right here, hit this button right here, let's move the camera a little bit. Mode, and now it goes to multimeter. And there you have the multimeter, then you have these function buttons have different meanings across the scale right there. We're gonna be testing those. And notice that's totally digital scale. It's nothing uh, analog looking about it. It's, it's really high tech looking that display. But look at that. I can move it around. It's, it, anybody that's in any angle can view that IPS screen on there. So let's test some of the functions on there. So I have the probes connected right now to the multimeter. And if you hit F1, you can see that you've got true RMS, which is really nice. You can measure the signal RMS value. You have DC, and then you have um, AC also. So if we go to DC, just an example, I have a uh, lithium ion battery right here. Let's just let's put the negative on the negative, positive on the positive, and it shows 4.003. So what's really cool is you see the needle move and it gives you actual value. So it gives you that analog feeling even though it's totally digital. Now we'll test the voltage, uh, the RMS and on my lab, but uh, let's move on right here. You go to function two and you have um, resistance measurements. Let's just try a uh, resistance box right here. So I've got a resistance box right here and I have it on the low end. So you see it's 15.4 ohms, that is correct. And if I go to medium, it shows 2.18, that is correct. And high, it shows 220K. So I love how it just goes to an analog mode with that display there and digital with the actual value. Really nice. Now let's go hit F1 again and we have a little symbol right there and that allows you to do continuity testing and that's really helpful when you're testing a circuit out to see if a, a strip of a circuit board is conductive and we hit it again and we have the symbol of a diode right there you see that little diode right there and if you have a diode in a circuit we could uh, put the lead on there and it'll show that it doesn't connect in that direction and if I go in the conduction direction, which is right there, then it shows me the voltage that's across that diode, 0.56. So that's really handy for testing diodes. And here's just an example. This is large diodes. This will work for the smallest diodes out there. Now you go to F3, and here is current. And uh, you have a choice of milliamp. And you have AC current also, which is nice. Now when you're doing current, you have to make sure that you switch the leads out and there's milliamp right there in 10 amp. Always start off for safety, go into the 10 amp and then work your way into the milliamp realm right there. And then we have the next, fun next function right here, which, which is the milliamp function. So that was amp function right there. So when you're on amps, obviously you're gonna switch this over to the largest setting right here, the 10 amps. And then when you go to F4, which is milliamps, they're gonna switch it over to the milliamp section right there. Very nice and concise and lets you see what you're actually measuring. If you hit the center menu button, you get the control of language, auto off, backlight on 100%, you can change, and also the version number of the meter is right there also, which is really nice. Now the included temperature probe, it connects in just like that, the ground and the, the radials to the plus, and you actually get temperature at centigrade. So it has centigrade temperature, and then right below to the bottom right, it has Fahrenheit temperature right there. To turn the unit off, you just hold this power button right here, and it powers down. And to turn the unit on, you just hold it again, and it comes up with the boot screen, and it defaults to the oscilloscope. Charging is very simple. I've taken the included USB-A, plugged it into a 1 amp or greater, plug it into the side to the USB-C, 
and there's a little status indicator right on the upper right there that stays regardless of the mode that you're in. If you change modes, it's still there. And that will let you know that it's charging, it has a little charging indicator, and it'll give you the status when it's all green. And if you have the unit powered off and you're charging it, you can see right here that this glows red, and that will turn to green when it's fully charged. On the F2 function, that where we had resistance and diode checking, there's a mode also where it'll show you capacitance. And that's really handy if you've got capacitors laying around and you don't know what value they are because the printing is missing. You can put it on a given capacitor and it will give you the actual value right there real time. So that's really handy when you have capacitors in a drawer and you don't know what they are anymore. So it's very accurate. It's matching what it should be based on this capacitance box. So I'm here in my lab and I've got other Zotac pieces of equipment and other multimeters and I've got an oscilloscope here. So I'm going to show you some basic things. I've got the voltage shown right there going to a circuit and that's the power supply right there. So it's really accurate and you can monitor your voltage, make sure that it's correct on a given circuit. So here I have a signal generator generating 2 kilohertz and I can measure the actual true RMS voltage right there and it has that analog line right there and I could change the voltage here and you could see it actually responds and shows me the actual true RMS voltage that is being sent to the meter and that's handy if you're doing any kind of audio lab work. So here I have my signal generator and it's uh, set up as a sine wave and I've got it going into the Zotac ZT702S and you can see the wave right there really cool because you could go to voltage and time by hitting the F1 button and then you could change the time scale on there to see that wave perfectly and you can also change the amplitude of it which is exactly what you want if you're doing testing so you can hone in on a given signal and in this case it's an analog signal but it can be totally digital if you're doing digital electronics or analog it'll work fine for either one that's a real important function to have on a multimeter so after testing what do I think about the Zotec brand their model ZT702S their 2-in-1 oscilloscope multimeter with a wonderful 2.8 inch IBS display really a cool product as I demonstrated this thing is impressive to be able to look at a waveform not have to go use an oscilloscope and have a full functioning multimeter on top of it with the IPS display you can see it's high quality at any angle of viewing so impressed by this product it works flawlessly and as I demonstrated it was allowed me to see a lot of different things from signals to diodes and resistors and capacitors you, this is the kind of product you want to have in your lab and I uh, want to get one for any engineer that you work with because this is really an amazing product. So I'm going to give it a full five star rating. Please remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to alert to new video uploads. And if you thought this review was helpful, please hit the like button. There will be an ordering link in the information section of this video review. Please use that link when you order this product to help support this channel. I hope this video review helped you with your buying decision. Thank you for watching.